Hello everyone, welcome again to FN Engineering channel. Today, I'd like to share regarding shell and tube heat exchangers. Shell and tube heat exchanger is the common heat exchanger types that are used in many industries. In this video, I'd like to share some international standard to be designed shell and tube heat exchanger and some configuration of shell and tube heat exchanger. Before we continue, please support this channel by subscribing to this channel and turn on the notification. Thank you. Alright, based on our experience, there are 5 international standards that commonly used to design cell and tube exchanger in the industries. The standards are GEMA, API 660, HEOI for cell and tube exchanger, SME Section 8 Division 1 Part UHX, and API 663. For detail, I will explain in the next slide. Furthermore, in some standards regulate the type, configuration, or arrangement of cell and tube with exchanger. So we usually know the cell and tube with exchanger TMA type, HEI type, ESME type, or hairpin type. In the next slide, we are going to know the latest edition of the standard for design of cell and tube heat exchanger. First, TEME, or Standard of Tubular Exchanger Manufacturer Association, 10th edition. Then, API, or American Petroleum Institute 660, Standard for Cell and Tube Exchanger, 9th edition. And API 663 for Hairpin Type Heat Exchanger, 1st edition. Next, HEI or Heat Exchanger Institute, Standard for Cell and Tube Heat Exchanger, 5th edition. Lastly, ESME or American Society of Mechanical Engineers, Section 8, Division 1, Part UHX, regarding rules for cell and tube heat exchanger. Next, we are going to overview the TME standards. Here is the table of contents in TME standards. There are part N or nomenclature, part F or fabrication tolerance, part G or general fabrication and performance information, part E or installation, operation and maintenance, part RCB or mechanical standards TME class RCB heat exchangers. It is the most important part for mechanical engineers. Then, part V, or flow-induced vibration, part T, for thermal relation, part P, for physical properties of fluids, part D, or general information, part RGP, or recommended good practice, and appendix A, especially for tube seats. The next standard is API 660. Here is the overview of this standard. There are scope, normative reference, term and definition, general, proposal information required, drawing and other required data, design, it is the most important for mechanical engineers, material, fabrication, inspection and testing, preparation for shipment, and supplementary requirements. In addition, there are some appendix such as recommended practice, shell and tube heat exchanger checklist, and cell and tube heat exchanger data sheets. Then, API 663. The table of content is similar with API 661, but in the appendix section is for hairpin heat exchangers. Then, heat exchanger institute standards for cell and tube heat exchanger. The overview is scope and purpose, definition, heat exchanger performance, material of construction, mechanical design standards. It is the most important for mechanical engineers. Heat exchanger protection and site installation, inspection, maintenance, and cleaning. Moreover, there are some appendixes in the standards. You can see the appendix from A to N. The last standard is SME Section 8 Division 1 Part UHX. 
Here is the overview of part UHX. There are scoop, materials and methods fabrication, terminology, design, gypsy effective bolt load, extension application and characteristic, rules for the design of YouTube tube sheet, fixed tube sheet and floating tube sheet. Then expression join, flexible shell, special test requirements, heat exchanger marking and report. The last are examples. The next material is configuration or type of cell and tube exchanger. There are four standards type of cell and tube exchanger, namely TMA, HEI type, ESME, UHX type, and hairpin types. TEME type. There are three different configuration. There are front head type, shell arrangement, and rear head type. The type of the front head are A, B, C, N, and D. Then the type of shell are E, F, G, H, J, K, and X. Lastly, rear head. There are L, M, N, P, S, T, U, and W. For detail, I will explain in the next slide. The next type is HEI type. Each EI type has five different configurations of cell and tube passenger that are front tube side, front tube seat, shell, real tube seat, and real tube side. Front tube side has three types. There are type C, type B, and type R. Next, front and real tube seat has four types: one, two, three, and four. Cell type and real tube side are the same with the. TME design. The other type is the SME UHX type. In UHX type has three different configuration for YouTube cell and tube passenger, fixed tube sheet cell and tube passenger, and floating tube sheet passengers. And the last type is hairpin types that are common from closure and separated from closure. All right. In the next material, we are going to know cell and tube passenger configuration based on the TME standard in more detail. First, we are going to explain the front end stationary head. There are five types of configuration that are type A, type B, type C, type N, and type D. The characteristic of each type can be distinguished in part of cover or channel. Type A uses removable cover and removable channels, so we can see the cover to channel and channel to shell using a bolting connection. Next, Type B, or commonly called bonnet type. This type uses a removable channel, but the cover is integrated with the channel. This type is the common head type of cell and tube passenger in my experience. The next is type C and type N. These types are similar. They use bolting connection in the cover and the channel is integrated with tube sheet. The difference between type C and type N is in the tube sheet. Tube sheet in the type C is only integrated with a channel, but in the type N, the tube sheet is integrated with both channel and shell, so the tube bundle using type C can be removable from the shell. The last type is type D. Type D is a special closure. It is commonly used for high pressure surfaces, so the cover and channel are integrated with each and the shell. The next configuration is shell arrangement. There are eight configuration of the shell. Type E is one pass width. Type F is two passes, so the type F requires impeachment bevel. Type G and type H are for split flow. Single split flow is for type G, and double split flow for type H. The other types are G12 and G21. They are for divided flow. 
We can know in the number of nozzle in the inlet and the outlet. Type G12 is from one inlet to two outlet. Meanwhile, the type G21 is from two inlet to one outlet. Moreover, type K or kettle type is commonly used for reboiler heat exchanger. The last type is type X or closed flow. It's commonly used for shell and tube heat exchanger that require a small pressure drop. The last configuration is the rear head arrangement. In this material, we divide the type of head to be two sub arrangement, namely rear head with floating head or fixed tube seat and without floating head or floating tube seat. First, we are going to explain the rear head without the floating head. There are four configurations that are type L, type M, type N, and type U. Type L is like type A, type M is like type B, and type N is like type N in the front head. Meanwhile, type U is for cell and tube with passenger using U tube. The last is the rear head configuration with a floating head. There are four types of floating heads, namely type P, type S, type T, and type W. Next, we are going to know this type in more detail. We have to see carefully the picture. Type P is an outside back floating head. It means we use flange bolting connection in two sides. There are cell side and channel side. Moreover, the tube seat is integral with the channel. Next, type S is a floating head with baking device. It means the tube seat is not extended as flange because we use baking device to prevent leakage between the cell side and tube side. The next type is type T. Type T use tube seat extended as flange, so the baking default is not mandatory or is not required. The last is type W. It is similar to type P, but in this type uses a split ring or run turn ring between cell flange, channel flange, and tube seat. Alright, now Turn on the other types. There are HEI type, ESME UHX type, and hairpin types. In more detail, I will explain this type in the next video. Inshallah. Please look forward to the next video. Alright, everyone, thank you for watching my video. If you have some comments or suggestion, please write on the comment column. And if you get something new from this video, please like my video, subscribe to my channel, share this video or channel to others, and turn on the notification from this channel to get update video from FM Engineering channel. See you next time.